you can like the way they like deliver their lines you can tell they uh, want you to laugh if that makes sense but okay. i was sitting there like god forbid i ever write something that they say you can tell they want you to laugh <laughs> yeah, like i didn't <laughs> i did not find <laughs> Hello, welcome to another episode of That Would Bang Podcast, where we talk about film, TV, and everything in between. I'm your co-host, Adesi. And I'm your co-host, Patricia. And today, mm, (laughs) we are joined by an extremely talented guest. I'm very excited to have you. You know what? When you actually replied to my email, I was actually very gassed. I can't even lie. So, yeah, just a little background story. I haven't even said your name, but I hope there's tears flowing for everyone listening. But yeah. (laughs) She has recently made the senior lifestyle reporter at PA Media. Would you like to clap for her? <laughs> She's also podcast host, creator, creative genius behind Black Prose Podcast. Ooh. It's the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented, also hilarious. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yolante Fawahimi. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome thank to the podcast. you for having me. Thank I'm you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, thank you for coming. How's your day been, everybody? How's your week been? How's life treating you in general? Mm. Mm. I can start. Mm. Okay. Um, I have come back. Well, the highlight of my week last week was Lisbon. So I've just had like a crazy busy couple of weeks, probably like a couple of months of work. Um, but last week I went to Lisbon for like four days and that was really nice. I packed a lot into those four days. Um, got there early on Wednesday, Thursday went to Porto for the day. That was like a three hour train ride there and back. Um, Friday went to Sintra and Kashkais. That's like a beach town. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How do you spell Kash Kash? Yeah, C A I S C A I S. I was gonna spell it as cash cash, like you know, C A S J. But I find Portuguese a very confusing language. Like mm. I don't understand a word of Portuguese, if I'm being honest. But that was really nice. And yeah, honestly, it felt really nice to get away. And I just feel like I need another trip to look forward to because You just got back. What yeah, holiday I need blues to get out though. Of here. When you go on holiday, mm. you immediately feel like you wanna go back again. Yeah. Mm. Even though you just came back because mm. everything was so beautiful and i was taking all the scenery and like all the like sights and it just felt like you know what it feels like you're being reinvigorated like mm. with life and stuff mm. um i'm going to paris in like oh. august but, <laughs> <laughs> but it okay. feel like enough do you know what i mean mm. um because yeah i had friends that went to grenada and like all over the place so i'm like get me out of here when you, money's not matching so. when you travel to europe do you feel like you've really traveled that's the question i think so because I feel like, especially if I'm taking in new things, like when I was in Lisbon, mm. I saw like Penna Palace and that looked nothing like Buckingham what's, Palace. What's Penna Palace? Yeah, it's Hester. What, no. <laughs> <laughs> not that, not Penna. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> what is it? Penna Palace is where like the old royal family used to live. Um, and their palace is in Sintra and it looks nothing like Buckingham Palace. Like it's, in all this like foliage and greenery and you have to like go up such a steep hill to get to it it's like Mm -hmm. so high up all this foliage and it's gorgeous like it's so gorgeous and i felt like seeing that i would never see that in the uk Mm. and all the vibe and everything like it's it definitely feels different for me but i guess a city break is always going to be like a city break at the end of the day yeah it just depends what you do who you go with Mm. yeah and also what you're intending to do on the holiday as well. Yeah. Mm. So what? Oh, yeah, sorry. Because sometimes you want... Because this trip felt like being at home away from home, if that makes sense. It felt like I was just living just somewhere else, which was, like, a good vibe. That was fine. But if you're looking to, like, unwind, relax, and just be in a completely different space, then you might want to go further afield than Europe. So... Yeah. You just need a beach. Yeah. That makes you feel like you're further away from home. Let's sense. break down this beach idea that beach is holiday. Guys, how many of you spend your whole time on the beach when you're on holiday? No, I don't. <laughs> exactly. Even when you get to the beach, after you sat there for a little bit, just what? look. Yeah. <laughs> what happens? You like, can, you read. Mm, I don't know, because I feel like people spend their whole year building summer body for that beach pick, for that beach situation. Then you get to the beach and then it's hot. The sand is burning you. You don't know how to end, what to do. A lot of people can't even swim. Can you swim? <laughs> I can actually swim, but I okay. Let me explain. I can swim, <laughs> mm-hmm. but when I can't feel my feet, I start to panic. 
You can't feel your feet or feel like feel the floor. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> you I'm concerned for you. <laughs> no, sorry, I meant but yeah, when I can't feel the the bottom of the the swimming pool, for example, mm. I start to feel like, whoa, am I gonna like sink? Yeah. But I was doing swimming lessons at one point though. At how old are you when you did them? No, like recently, like Oh, was oh. in this is now. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I wanted to like brush off my skills yeah, a bit more. Yeah. But it was like ten block lessons mm. and I haven't renewed my why? Ten block. why didn't you renew? Life, you know. <laughs> Life. <laughs> she said life that's why life <laughs> swimming gives you abs guys did you know that it's really good for fitness mm-hmm. yeah. works everything because you're literally fighting for your whole life to not, <laughs> <laughs> to not drown the whole time yeah. of course you'll be fit of course um but yeah how was your week though what did you do i feel like i've been very go 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 mm. because i've started a new job i'm adjusting to their pace it's very different mm. it's a lot more demanding so like now i'm just like like for example, I ate my lunch in the evening, which is very unlike so me. Dinner. I normally take my full hour, mm. but it's like so intense. Yeah. So I think I'm just trying to be patient, patient with myself to mm. adjust, mm. get used to the new routine. Yeah. But I think it's been a good week. So then, what what would you say? What's your dream thing to write? Oh, that's a good question. I know. I'm not. <laughs> I tweeted this maybe a few weeks ago that I'd love to go on tour with artists oh my God, and yeah. write about the BTS of touring. Because I feel like it's actually so taxing. Like for example, we won't say she's on tour. She's taking two day break between each thing. Her voice hasn't cracked. Mm. Like how are you? What do you do? Okay, obviously we're seeing her like on holiday and stuff. But what do you do behind the scenes? How do you like protect your mind? And how's the rehearsals? Yeah. Are there arguments? How do you deal with conflict? Mm. Are the dancers like has someone annoyed someone? I just want to be a fly yeah. in the wall and document that. Cause I really like narrative nonfiction, but mm. I also love fiction as well yeah um what else do i love to write is there a particular artist yeah, who, who oh <laughs> i haven't actually got a particular artist in really? mind yeah anyone that will take me i don't know i think someone that is at a stage in their career where they've hit that they feel like they're at their high just because then there's more context to everything Mm. If that makes sense. So does this is this like a Beyonce or is this like a Stormzy? Yeah, I wouldn't mind like a Beyonce. A... I wouldn't mind a Stormzy. Yeah, mm. I hear it. Yeah, I hear it. That's one thing I like to do. There's so many like ideas that I've always have like roaming around, but sometimes you don't know if they're good ideas or not. Mm. Um, but there's one story that I've been trying to write. I really want to write a piece about God being in the metaverse. Mm. So I've, I've kind of written it, but it hasn't it hasn't got a home sort of thing. What's the concept? So it's the whole thing of how church attendance has gone down well, since the pandemic mm. and people started to go to the metaverse of church. Really? Like this. So mm. I've attended church services in the metaverse. Wait, you so, use the metaverse? Yeah, because for the story, I had to, oh, I've done like research and I've gone to church did services. You that one, I didn't have all that stuff. No. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so then how did it work? How so that there's work? a 3D Who's... and there's 2D. Oh, so I joined okay. via the 2D version of. It's called Alt Space. Ooh. There's different like yeah, yeah, yeah. VR, virtual reality platforms. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was just very interesting. But I can't do it though. I can't be going to church. Ooh. Everyone's like a- What was the vibe like? Avatar, so were they all worshiping like, like as like weird. weemies? Like. Yeah, and like the sermon is very interactive. So the pastor was telling the st- sermon, but that like, there's water behind him. So he's demonstrating what the scripture is saying. <laughs> That like you'll see the scripture be like erected out of the ground so that like you can read it oh, in 3D. That's so interesting. But yeah, that's that's one story I want to do. That is very but yeah, interesting. There's a few, but I just feel like mm. you just have to sit with things sometimes. Mm. Yeah, let him just, it. Yeah. Mm. The future looks very interesting. Mm. Mm. Scary. Interest- I'm scared, man. I'm very scared. Even Black, because we were going to talk about Black Mirror, but you said you, you wanted to watch it in season one. Yeah, because I yeah. haven't actually watched it before. You actually don't. You can watch many episode. It's an anthology series, so yeah. like mm. each episode is standalone. Mm. But I think when you watch season one, you'll realise how they just predicted a lot of what we're living now. Really? Like, oh, yeah. Very scary. That's, yeah. I find that really weird when like screenwriters predict stuff. Like it's The really Simpsons weird. guy. I was just about to say, yeah. So, but there's so many examples of that as well. Like, does he know something we don't? Is he a time traveler? I don't understand how you could predict that much. Yeah, the, the Simpsons one, I can't, I can't say. But a lot of like screenwriters, what would happen is that they come up with an idea, and then like scientists will look at it and be like, let's try that. 
if that makes mm-hmm. sense. So if things catch up. But the Simpsons mm-hmm. ones, those ones are very like final. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's so weird. Mm. I don't know. Do you know what is really terrifying to me? This whole AI thing. Mm-hmm. And not in like in a what's the word I'm looking for? Because you know how it can be helpful, like people use it for essays and research. Okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, like you see those videos on like TikTok and social media and it's people like deep fake like there's a whole oh. show on itv for example that show that's got, like, is so good space oh okay not that show sorry is it the capture wrong show the yes capture. That no, show. the capture is yeah. really good i love that no. show that was scary really good. Mm-hmm. but <laughs> <laughs> have you not seen the itv they advertise it like after love island and yeah i've like, seen it but i just don't Kanye take it seriously i find it weird space. it's really weird but it's weird that you can do that as well so then do you feel like we have to get to a point where we co- where we copyright our faces or we oh. have to copyright our body? Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's too late. We have face, what's that thing? Recognition. Yeah, I think they have too much data off that's of us. Yeah. Like even that whole thing of data privacy and state of protection. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, there's no point asking me about it because you've got everything already. Yeah. Like you've got everything about me. You know where I live. There's cameras. Like, All these ring doorbells as well. Exactly. Everything. There's collecting yeah. so much data. Even like when you do the... Um, the face face recognition. Mm-hmm. You have to be doing yeah. surgery every, every single angle. They've got, they've, they got, they, they've got everything. Your thumbprints. Yeah. They have it all. Yeah. Like even Siri, that whole thing of like Siri listens to us. I actually believe it. You know, oh, that's so that. true. You can turn it off there. You can turn like even because everyone that has an Alexa and Google Home, like I've turned off my mic with both of them because you can turn off mics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now must be recording me. So can you not speak to it anymore? No. I don't talk to my Google Home. Why am I talking to a robot? But I'll, <laughs> five years time, this won't age well. Do you get what I mean? Like, mm. everyone will be talking to robots. But yeah, um, me this week, what have I done? I went to the theatre. I watched School Girls. Have you watched it yet? Not yet. How is it? So yeah. good. So apparently Anna Winter went. went to go and watch really? it. Mm-hmm. Really? Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if she like hid. <laughs> like you know some people don't want to be known that they're there <laughs> yeah but she, someone must have saw her she you know people saw her people were like oh my gosh i saw her. And, and i feel like you can't she can't she's Hi. wearing so glasses and she's and that, wearing that, that's so true and because she's in london she wants to do all the things that are yeah. culturally relevant 100 percent. so yeah um it was really good really funny really really funny it was set in like a secondary school in the 80s um at a boarding school in ghana and it was just so funny because it felt so realistic like Africans, when Africans insult you, you feel it in your spirit. You feel it in your soul. Yeah. And I felt like everyone watching that felt the insults deeply. So <laughs> it was really good. good. Was there any particular insults? I don't want to repeat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to repeat. But it's like, that a lot of the insults were insulting, but it's like, you'd hear that in Nigeria or Ghana. You can't say that in the UK. Oh, Do you get what I mean? Okay, fine. Exactly. Yeah. So it was just funny. It was just funny. Really good play. Really, really good play. Um, do you know what play I did end up seeing? Oh. Um, for all the boys. For black boys? Yeah, for black boys. Oh, God. For all the boys. Yeah, I don't know why I was mixing it up with the rom-com. But um, I don't think I loved it. I might Wait. have been the only person so I wasn't, think that. <laughs> so I, I wasn't actually expecting that. <laughs> that took me back a bit. Because everyone I've spoken to has really loved it, but I just don't think I really kind of felt moved by it. I didn't really cry i didn't really laugh i don't really think yeah i don't think i don't think i really got the message it was intended to kind of like portray i mean i obviously understood it um but i just don't know personally for me like if i i felt it went deep enough almost and sometimes i felt like it was do you want that to beat of, what do no, you want? no no like some of it was actually really poignant like when he was talking about kind of one of the characters was talking about kind of an experience with an older woman kind of thinking, oh, you know, this was a great first time, but actually not, not right at all. So that was like really deep and really powerful and stuff. But other times I felt like the dialogue was kind of just taking bits of like what you say on social media almost. And like some bits I just felt like just didn't really like land with me. I don't know what it was, but I was kind of sitting there thinking I thought it was going to be more than what it was. But I don't know. I feel like also, especially because of social media, our expectations for art mm. things is so like up here True. Yeah. because everyone's literally like it's like a echo chamber everyone's saying this 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 yeah. and then when you watch you're like oh yeah and maybe so if you didn't have any expectation maybe you would have yeah i don't know you'll be able to go in with like a cleaner mm-hmm. slate mind, mm-hmm. yeah yeah i don't know because yeah. sometimes it's a bit annoying like even with succession mm. i haven't watched season four yet 
But on that day, when season four came out, I was dodging everything. I had to Same. mute, 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 mute. But that doesn't even really work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It always seeps through, literally. Literally. But, um, I just wait. Like, I have not gone back into season four. I'm just going to leave it a couple months and go back in so I can kind That's of get everything. Um, yeah. Our succession. Guys, I feel like it's a show that requires you to be thinking so much when you're watching it. You have to be in I the mood. Think. I have to be in the mood. Because they I talk it so yet. fast and everything's going... The camera's oh, like... Yeah. Before you it's blink, three fast. jokes have been said and you've missed it. I love the jokes. <laughs> Don't you think so? It's, it's so true. Like, so yeah, Succession. That's my, like, my dad watches it and he's proper into it. And every time I try, I'm like, I feel like I have to be in school, like, very intentionally Studying watch. It. Yeah, I'm okay. And the episodes are quite long. Mm-hmm. Wait, it's a slow burner, though. It mm. is. It took me... I think two goes to like actually get into two it. What? Two goes. Oh, like to try like it twice. Two tries to get into it. And what then yeah, it's a slow burner. What does that mean? Two goes, like two And then t- I kept starting it and then stopping and falling out of it and then I had to start again. The fact that you went it. back, you're better than me. <laughs> I really want to understand it. I really wanted to understand why everyone loved it. It's so good. It is. I find it really It's clever. Funny. It's clever. Mm. I don't understand all the business side of things. I'm just like, okay, that deal went well. This still didn't go well. But mm-hmm. I don't really understand the economics behind it. I'll be so real with you. I feel like we're not meant to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like it's just the backdrop for everything. Yeah, yeah. It's to make everything stand out more, all the mm-hmm. nonsense. I'm here for the dynamics. Yeah, the that's just like the background. Yeah. That the holds money, it. the rich, the, yeah. all of that, all of that. Kendra reminds me of a cross between Matt Hancock and the guy from Meta. The one that... Mark Zuckerberg. It? Zuckerberg, yeah. Don't really? You mean how he looks or just his character? Just vibe as well, because you know how he's a bit like stiff. Like, yeah, but then he starts doing really yo-yo and rapping. <laughs> yeah. It's like, giving him that Hancock. That guy, his arc is so interesting. <laughs> How did you end up on I'm a Celebrity? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Questions that need answering. Anyway. <laughs> Ooh, um, oh, speaking of politics. Oh, that's a good segue. I thought it was an amazing segue. The Diplomat. <laughs> Woo! Woo! For anyone who doesn't know what The Diplomat is, it is a political thriller on Netflix, which follows an ambassador for the US as she kind of has to diffuse an international crisis, but also come to terms with being in the limelight a bit more, and also her relationship with her husband, or maybe Mm. soon to be ex-husband. So that is The Diplomat, and what did you guys think of it? Similar to you with Mm. Succession, it took me a while to get into. Yeah. So I tried it twice as well. I give myself twice for any show, and after that, I'm not. I'm not forcing myself to do anything. Yeah. I really, really <laughs> <laughs> wait twice as in of the first episode or twice of the first episode. Okay. And if I just can't, mm-hmm. you just give up. Just give it, give it, leave it alone. I really enjoyed it. It's so, it's so serious, but so interesting at the same time. Mm. Like, I think what I really did love was that the relationship between the husband and wife, and just how he's grappling with his own thing of being almost pushed to the side side, and then also she's one trying to prove her prove herself wrong prove him wrong doesn't like the limelight Mm. but likes the job but doesn't like the job Mm. and then her husband is in a weird way helping her Mm. it's actually loves that he's helping her but hates it at the same time Mm. yeah like it's a really weird dynamic. I get the sense that she's trying to like forge her own lane a bit because obviously like she's kind of been catapulted into this expectation to kind of bridge this gap. And she clearly is a bit more of a trailblazer, like the fact that she like took off her heels and walking around, like she clearly doesn't fit the mold of what people expect her to be. And I think that's probably where the discomfort comes from because she's just like, I know I can do this and I know I can do that, but it's just sort of like, is it like how it needs to look like for these other people? I don't know. But um, yeah. What did what did you think, Adesi? So you said it was a thriller. I thought it was a comedy. Is it not a comedy? Am I? I don't think the genre is officially a, a comedy, comedy. But they were throwing in jokes. There was. I didn't find it funny though. Yeah, but I was like, I knew I was meant to laugh then. Yeah, yeah. So it's not. Who would you say is funny? The, hus- the husband, or I'm trying to think who's no, funny. No, everyone. They all have their one liners. Yeah. Like, they all have their. They they throw in there. Yeah, definitely. Mm. You can like the way they like deliver their lines. You can tell. They uh, want you to laugh if that makes sense, but okay. I was sitting there like, God forbid I ever write funny. something that they say you can tell they want you to laugh. <laughs> yeah, like, I, did, <laughs> I did not <laughs> find actually, that's a problem. I'm trying to think, did I, I find myself laughing? Did you, you, did you ever did find it. yourself at the edge of your seat? At the edge of my seat? No, no, no. I'll just, I'll just curious to know what is going to happen. It's curiosity, I mm. agree. Yeah, it's like, 
I tried to stop watching it after the other one. Oh my gosh, why the recruit? No? I think it is maybe the, the one on Netflix with Noah yeah. Centineo. No, 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 no. Okay, no, I'm wrong. That one. Oh is it? Gosh. I, I think in which what's what's the storyline? Oh, it's basically this guy that does the phone lines <laughs> in the White House. Basically, <laughs> that's really good. What was it called? Okay. I'm really it's called. Is it not? It's not the caller. It's something about that job. Yeah. The night, the night agent. The night agent. Oh no, guys, guys! I tried the night agent. What the heck? What the heck? Pause. That looked like NCIS. <laughs> Wait, why didn't you like it? It looked like NCIS. It looked like daytime television. Guys, really? what are we talking about? Sorry, I it watched episode know. one. It was good. It was good. I watched episode one and I said, "Why does this feel like I'm watching Channel Five on Netflix?" You don't agree? No. Mm. Yeah. Okay, maybe I should give it that second chance that you guys <laughs> I thought it was I really sick. tried. No, no, It no. was very, like, dramatic, and there was, like, lots of, like, things yeah. blowing up and, like, all these actions. Yeah, it felt like Nollywood. <sighs> no, come on. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me stretch it back. Channel <laughs> 5. Some Channel 5. Channel Did you five. expect the twist? For the night agent or? Yeah, the night agent. So, no. Um, not really. Because I was just like, okay, we're seeing so many shady characters, yeah? But I was like, surely this woman is not going to be a traitor. I was like, I can't. Lo and behold, it's her. she was, it was her. I think when I realised it was her, I actually shouted. Yeah, it got me. It actually did. But I watched this show, The Diplomat, off the back of that thinking, okay, I'm in the mood for this. And I was watching it and I was kind of like, this is not really, <laughs> this is not giving. It's mm. very dry, but mm. it's, I don't know how to explain it. It was giving, it was giving American. Mm. yeah yeah actually that's a good yeah it's very american it's very american actually and it's given american in regards to how it been it's like it was trying to give socially conscious america <laughs> you get what i mean kind of so like when i'm saying it's giving american it's like it's giving american in regards to how they see the rest of the world but then they were trying to make out that we know that we see the world this way so we're trying to call ourselves out but it still felt very do you yeah, get what I, I mean what you're saying. yeah um i don't know how to describe that but that's i get what you mean mm-hmm. i think even showing like the relationship between britain and america that was very interesting to see mm. and the prime minister yeah. <laughs> you can tell even him he was trying to prove that britain is great you know? it was a bit corny mm-hmm. like the dialogue and everything like, yeah when the woman was like oh my gosh this child has lost her his father in like the explosion you know like when he was given the press conference mm-hmm. yeah it was, it was cringe so you're, you're, a oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you're a liar you're a liar you're a liar i was like oh, i know if this cringe. was a real brit they would be saying some more things than that you're a liar you don't <laughs> exactly. do that you don't do that <laughs> that would have been very different um so like you saying that it's a very american show i also feel like it was very american in like the style of it and like mm-hmm. the way the dialogue was set up and like the way they delivered their lines it felt very like i kind of see your point about it being like a comedy almost because it's just like oh. the way they were talking it could have been like how i met your mother except mm-hmm. it was just a political a form- backdrop literally it was a comedy script in a serious yeah, environment yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> no yeah. that's Come what on. it was there was they were doing if this yeah. was in a like if they just changed it to an apartment building and they were all in their 20s it would be friends <laughs> but it's actually kind of a wild statement friends it's so unrelated but i hear it i actually hear it mm. it kind of would be that so is there anything else that you liked about it in particular mm. i think i really liked seeing her, her husband uncomfortable mm. i don't know and I, I think throughout the whole show i kept asking myself do i like this guy or not because he was sometimes really annoying but then sometimes mm. i'm like Okay, I get why you did that. But then also, I'm like, what's your game plan here? Mm. What is was he, he shady? Like, was he, like... I haven't doing... finished it yet. Oh. Yeah. I'm halfway through. Was he shady from, like, the whole of this season? Mm-hmm. No. Like, everything he was doing was to help her. Fine. But okay. at, towards the end, we started to see, or she starts to imply that maybe he wants, like, a... Sec- I think Secretary of State role or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So then she's starting to think, you're doing this because you want something out of it. 100%. So that's why you're trying to help me. Because mm-hmm. I don't think he was made to be at the in the background like that and just do yeah. nothing. I think I those, those narrative arcs, they will turn against each other eventually. Definitely. They'll both be competing against each other. But then with the husband, like, I like their friendship. Yeah. 
that's, that's what kept chemistry. them that's what yeah. kept them together mm-hmm. i want to know more though about what happened mm. about that like, why that's another thing i was surprised they were getting a divorce i don't know if it was i wasn't paying attention but what happened specifically like when did that i don't know when that was revealed they didn't they didn't really go into detail about why they're getting divorced it was just more are. about i feel like it's the whole his dynamic and how he is mm. it's more about i want to do this i think also she feels like he's never gonna change mm. he's not like is he a narcissist is that the oh. word like Ooh. it's it's almost like i feel like he actually is diagnosed with something <laughs> wow i'm not joking. <laughs> no I'm being he's serious. really weird though i'm serious like i think he's like I might be wrong, but I feel like it will be revealed that he's di- he's a diagnosed narcissist and he can't help himself. Does that make sense? That's true. He can't help he himself. He can't help himself. That's himself. definitely and true. And he knows he can't help himself because he said a line that I think it's like in episode two where he said that all people who want power shouldn't be allowed it. Or, or do you get what I mean? Mm. Or people that don't like power should be the ones that are given it. And like he knows that he likes power. That's why he's not. You like Fine. he's aware of his flaws. I don't get it because there was that whole scene right, and he was talking to that black guy i don't know his name and i think it's stuart how you reduce us just like that <laughs> i think his name's stuart don't call me a racist. is he the one that's like helping her yeah yeah I think his name is stuart say stuart. His name. i think his name yeah stewie stewart um <laughs> the point i was trying to make is that um stewart had found out that he was getting a divorce um and he, i don't know it was a kind of assumption that she's going to take me back and it was that awareness that, yeah, I do things that she doesn't like, but she's going to take me back and I'm mm-hmm. not going to do them anymore. I feel like that was just almost self-aware in a bad way because it's like, you know, you're a terrible person, but there doesn't seem to be any remorse around that. That's it's kind of just like it's, it's, methodically, it's, it's, yeah. I'm just not going to do that thing. Rather I'm, than like, why am I not doing it again? It's hurting her, this sort of thing. It's just like, okay, she, she'll take me back, but I won't do it again. I think exactly like what you said, because they're friends, he knows her he almost knows her more than she knows herself. herself. Even like, if he scary. noticed, there was this like thing that kept happening every time they had breakfast. Mm. How he'll rip out the food. Like, and, she'll, she'll and, and she'll be she'll eating, eating it. Eating the scraps. Oh, I found that so weird. And like, so the black guy, oh oh, Stuart, God. he's basically the audience because he's looking at them like, what is this? So he'll come in, he'll rip up all the breakfast, the full English. He'll be ripping up the egg, I've mashing it up. I've rip full English And before. he wouldn't even eat it. And then he will leave. Then she'll come in and she'll be sitting down eating it. And the, the, the black guy's like, what's going on <laughs> like they, they like they're so like in sync it's very and good he, he, you didn't notice that it was when he was breaking the egg with his hands. i was like what's, what's going on and, and he was doing every that. morning he'll be doing that for oh, her that is weird and that's the only way she'll eat mm. breakfast if it's ripped so like that's i don't know symbolic. is that they're very codependent yeah oh, they definitely need each other but then it was like the part that kind of the, this is why I'm still convinced that there is something wrong with him. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. You know when she started beating him, like beating him up? Well, beating in the garden? Him? Yeah. That was kind of weird. Nah, it was necessary. <laughs> she jumped on him and she was like... Yeah, she really took went out Because she knew that she had... That's the only... If you don't, you know... <laughs> yeah, feel. <laughs> that's literally it. Because she was really, really going she for it. For it. And she said she something. Was. It's like, when you said that we'll get a divorce after 10 years, did you mean it? And he didn't mean it. Yeah, mani- he just knows how to manipulate. I don't think he wants. To, he doesn't want a divorce. Mm-mm. Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't care for that. That f- yeah, for a divorce. Yeah, I don't think I he wants. Th- divorce. Does he even love her? He doesn't. He loves Ooh. himself. And he loves the job, and he likes people knowing him yeah, and seeing him as a hero. Because wasn't like the whole point of her getting this job because of him anyway? Kind of his reputation, kind of forged the path for her to do this anyway. Mm. Definitely an ego trip there. But then would you still want the same job as like your husband? Like, no. Doesn't even it even just brings the whole conversation to like this whole marriage situation and like would you want to be in the same like industry or be working? Do you mm. get what I mean? Like, it's not competition. If you say, babe, I love you, but you're competing. You're my you're my opponent. But does it have to be that way though? Does it? Yeah. It doesn't need to be competitive. At but all. then it depends on, for example, Beyonce and Jay Z, right? People call. People like always kind of pit that pit them against each other, or they call like Jay Z Beyonce's husband. Like, <laughs> and they're very that intentional correct? about that. <laughs> exactly, it's a bit wild. And I feel like ego wise for both of you, when you like, mate, I'm gonna be taken seriously for my accolades, what I've done. But I think people do take Jay Z. Yeah, that's the thing. They just play in, man. Yeah, they're they're just playing. Just trying to wind him up. Yeah, they take him seriously. 
Because if you be like, I'll bring, I'll bring the second one then. Even like, like even like um, Pharrell Williams show how him and Jay Z performed together, mm-hmm. and he was telling the crowd to clap, and they were carry, they were clapping out of that off beat, and he said stop, and everyone <laughs> like they people respect that man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. <laughs> He said, don't worry about it. You guys That's are not getting really beat. funny when you think about it. Like, he said, don't worry about it. Just forget it. Just forget how asked. Yeah. So, I feel like people respect me. They're just playing, just playing, just playing. I think they do. Maybe a good example is almost Justin Bieber and Hayley Baldwin. No, no. Those are two different industries. Really? Don't bring in Justin and Hayley. Hayley catches corn for she no reason. <laughs> leave her alone. I have to look at All of you TikTok. people, leave her alone. It's like her walking into you a dead end alley. And it's just trying to, like, it's, it's, it's just, just secondhand <laughs> embarrassment every single time. She did nothing to you she guys. Did, she actually didn't. I don't even hate her. Yeah, I have no nothing. I just logged into TikTok and suddenly everyone just hates People her online. Can't really, the ones I was going to use as a reference, right? Mm. Laura Whitmore and Ian uh, that man Ian Sterling, Love Island. Do you watch Love Island? Uh, kind of, but no, so not consistent. Tonight, the voiceover. Yeah. Oh, them. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Presenter who's not Maya mm-hmm, Jammer, mm-hmm. husband and wife. Yeah. People are pitting them against each other. Really? Or they didn't rate her, but they rated him. Imagine going home to dinner that night. She must be crying all the time. Oh. That's true, actually. Yeah. Aww. They did not like her. <laughs> it was the aww. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this place is not sexy. No, I'm, no, I'm actually thinking about it. Like, imagine her coming home always like... Because people are dragging her life. and people are gassing his jokes off or laughing about what he has to say. Like, Do you gotta You'd have to have really thick skin for that. I don't know. I think, would I date someone in the same industry? I don't get the sense it would be competitive i just think it's boring like if we're coming home from work and we're talking about the same things like i want to be able to like learn like have a bit of separation because taking like work home and then still talking about the work that you do at home just seems really repetitive and really boring then you can relate but it's just like yeah i don't know but then it's like a middle ground as well it's like yeah. i don't need to explain what i do you just get it it's you true. just get it and then you guys can both talk about things mm. you know Maybe not the same like Relations, employer. Yeah, okay. that's when it's too I mean, much. Those like, couple yeah. love couples. I can't be doing not the same romance. employer. Maybe that one's a bit. I work in a really big company though, and I'm just like you want to do work place romance. Yeah, but like you can honestly <laughs> who, see who, who, one who person and your, never see them again. Patricia, who have you got your eyes on? No one. <laughs> that's the thing. No. Well, there's a few like good looking people in my office. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's so big that honestly you could probably feel like you're working in a different place. Mm. Like that's how big and separated it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i don't know but i feel like either way is fine i think everyone just needs to be cons- secure in themselves it's true mm. like just be secure in your in yourself and your abilities and want to push each other to be the best that they can be rather than being friend i just mm. find that strange that, yeah like yeah what if you're not good not good in that and but the other person is good what do you guys think about people doing things they're not good at though what do you mean doing what sorry like pursuing things they're not good at but did they know that they're not good at it i guess it depends it's talking about like music i think just in general but then i wait (laughs) (laughs) i don't know because you're always gonna you're always gonna be a beginner Like, <laughs> wait, I don't know. I don't know why you guys are laughing. No, I, why are you laughing like this? Is there something that you're thinking about? <laughs> I actually don't know what's going on. I'm just as confused Nothing as you, by Well, basically what I'm trying to say is... <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying oh, to say whoa. is that... That you will be a beginner at one point no yeah so i guess it depends on the stage you're meeting them at if (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i don't know but like where's the line between like you just need to persevere it's not your time versus this is actually not your lane it's not not for you but you don't want to be the one to tell them that it's not and then they blow and then you were that person that hater you were the motivation they needed to to fight yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh i don't know I feel like sometimes as well, deep down, we know when to let things go. It's true. It it depends what your goal is with the thing you're doing. Mm. If it's a hobby, just doing it for fun. Mm. If you actually want to get good at it. If it's a natural talent. Yeah. It just depends on the context. Yeah. I feel like 
the society that we're in almost rewards mediocrity. Is it mediocrity or tea? Tea. Tea. Mm-hmm. Me- mediocrity. Every so often on TikTok, there's like another rapper like popping up and it's just sometimes it won't even be the best thing you've ever heard because it's like blown or it's got it's gone viral or like there's something like interesting about them like their look or something then suddenly you latch onto it and then it can catapult you into like fame and then it's just a matter of maintaining that so it's like this brand deal or this song with this person and then suddenly you're just established and all it took was that one mediocre moment to get you there so sometimes it's not even about the talent. Sometimes it's literally just the mix of luck. Mm-hmm. And actually agree. Yeah, and just go like that's really what it what it's about now. Yeah, this life I don't think it's about talent anymore, which is so sad. Mm. And I hope that this is a season. I hope it's not long term longevity. Mm. But I think it's about audience. Audience is value. Once you capture an audience, you have you have the world. That's true. Before you need the talent to be given an audience. Yeah. Now you need audience to kind of buy talent yeah that's actually so true because how many like really good singers do you know that you sh- you think should be like, up there mm. that are still they're fighting they're fighting they're struggling it's so true it's kind of crazy i think social media is definitely to blame because mm. it's democratized oh gosh this is how i mm. enter my bag it's democratized fame right so it means that anyone mm. can become famous and initially it sounded cool and it sounded like, yeah, we've made it easy, but it literally, literally means that anyone could be famous for doing nothing. Mm. And then we've seen it heightened by the fact that you can buy your verification ticks, if that makes yeah. sense. Which isn't, which I think, I personally don't, I don't understand. Do you understand it? What the blue tick thing? Buying I think tick. if you have a job that requires for you to be verified. Yeah. But now I think because everyone can verify themselves, it just means that we do it so that we feel like we're valuable. Like we're yeah. telling us, we're telling the world that I have value. Like I mean something, and I just find I just think it's very interesting. Yeah. But what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Or am I overthinking it? No, I think I agree. Because with the blue tick, I was I had a blue tick because of work, mm-hmm. and then it got removed. I'm like, okay. Wait, they took away everyone that had them. They took them away. Yeah. Every single person's blue tick is gone yeah. unless Elon Musk, Elon Musk has chosen you <laughs> yeah. to have it or you've bought it. You have to, yeah. Wow. Even if it doesn't matter if your job anymore, like you will see Lizzo no blue tick. Yeah, celebrities <laughs> no blue tick. Well, yeah, unless you it also encourage people to actually pay for the blue tick. So then, if we all pay for blue ticks, what happens? I think if it's if it's for your career or no, I just think if people are pretending to be you, I understand. Mm. But if not, I think it's just to say that I'm a serious person, and I hope you don't investigate too much on my profile to see. But there isn't even any perks like. It might boost your post, maybe, but, like... Does it? Nah, man, it's no perks. It's just there. It's not really anything, to be honest. I think mm. it's also, like, retweets and likes. It blows hot air up your backside, basically. Because it's, like, it makes you... Because once you say something and it goes viral, it makes you feel like, oh, let, let, let me get that rush mm. again. So it's just, like, what can I say? And then it's, like, a constant thing of needing to fuel that gratification that you get from strangers online which is really interesting but yeah i've, I've really enjoyed this conversation guys this was entertaining me too sure. um that's it for today's episode of that would bang podcast which i hope you all enjoyed thank you to yolante for joining us on this episode you can follow her at at yolante Fauhinmi. 